Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you to you and the ranking member for hosting, I think, what's a very important um, hearing and topic. Uh, a key element of combating homelessness is supportive housing. Uh, or housing paired with supportive services, such as treatment for health conditions and substance use disorders. It seems to me that these services are critical as they can help ensure families are able to stay in their home and provide resources to deal with conditions that make it harder to do so. So, Mr. Oliver, can you talk to us about the role expanding permanent supportive housing plays in the administration's strategic plan to end homelessness? Thank you, Senator. One of the pillars of our plan is called uh, housing and services, and we deliberately paired those two things. Uh, we know that housing is essential to end homelessness, but housing alone isn't always sufficient. And depending on people's life experiences, the challenges they're facing, people need different degrees of support. I mean, all of us do. You think about uh, all of the support that we get from family and friends, from professionals, from therapists, from uh, all sorts of both uh, social supports and, uh, and professional supports. The same is true for anyone who's been homeless. And so I think the key is to really tailor and individualize those wraparound supports in a way that makes sense for that family, for that young person, for that veteran, uh, for that person living in, in a tribal or a rural area. I know it gets harder when you're in rural areas in Alabama or Ohio or Wyoming where there just aren't that many services. And I think that gets to be the real challenge um, that we all need to, to wrestle with. Uh, how, how do we scale those up? Well, I'm glad to hear that access to supportive housing is a core element of the plan. We look forward to working with you on those services. Uh, let me turn to uh, another issue. HUD's most recent annual homelessness uh, assessment report, or AHAR, shows that the number of individuals experience chronic homelessness has continued to increase, even as the overall number of people experiencing homelessness has mostly leveled off. Dr. Cho, what factors are driving the increase in chronic homelessness specifically, and what additional steps can we take to moderate the trend of rising chronic homelessness? Yeah, thank you so much for raising that, Senator. And I think you actually answered that in your, in your first question, which is, we've seen a significant decrease in the production of new permanent supportive housing, which is the best tool we have to uh, address chronic homelessness. People experiencing chronic homelessness are people who've experienced homelessness long-term and who have a disabling condition, whether it's mental illness, addiction, or chronic medical conditions, often all co-occurring at the same time. Uh, and permanent supportive housing is the intervention that provides that wraparound supports along with affordable housing. From 2010 to 2016, our nation added 104,000 new units of permanent supportive housing to the national inventory. From 2016 to 2020, we only added 32,000 in that, in that four-year period. So we, the rate of new permanent supportive housing production was cut in less than, than half of what it was in the prior six-year period. Mm -hmm. We need to get back to doing that. Um, HUD is using resources from the American Rescue Plan as well as resources provided through appropriations to help communities provide the capital and operating <laughs> Um, as well as supportive services to, to um, create more permanent supportive housing. Through our continuum of care program, we actually fund about 240 million of those funds actually goes to pay for supportive services in permanent supportive housing settings. I appreciate that answer. You know, AHAR 2022 uh, detailed demographic data for the overall population of persons experiencing homelessness, but it does not have data for this population of persons experiencing chronic homelessness. Given the struggle these individuals face, whether it's that ho that affordable housing shortage you just spoke about or whatever, uh, I think it's critical that we understand uh, more about them. Can you commit that you'll work on obtaining this data and making it public? Yes, Senator. We actually do collect that in the second part of our AHAR reports, which tracks the number of people who use our, permanent, our, our uh, homeless assistance programs. Um, that is the uh, latest data on that Part two of our AHAR report um, uh, covers 2019 and 2020. And in that report, we do have demographics uh, on, on people who are experiencing chronic homelessness, okay, um, so we'll including have, their age. And that's publicly, uh, uh, that's made public. Yes, already. it is. Senator. All right, so I have to look at that. Finally, um, I worry uh, that Congress met the challenge of the pandemic with a historic response from the eviction moratorium to emergency housing rental assistance to housing counseling, the list goes on. Uh, that response was overwhelmingly successful in keeping people in their homes throughout the pandemic. However, these programs are expiring, and I worry that if we see a weakening of our core federal housing programs, uh, what we're gonna see is an increase 
uh, in the homelessness uh, situation that people will face. How can we ensure that the expiration of COVID era housing programs don't contribute to rising homelessness? Well, Senator, I think the answer is that we need continued investments through our uh, regular appropriations um, for the uh, permanent supportive housing, rapid rehousing, and more housing vouchers. Um, I know the president's budget will be released um, um, soon, and that will um, provide uh, at least what the administration is seeking um, with regard to housing resources. Um, we've learned a lot through the pandemic era um, um, programs, in particular the emergency housing voucher program, which is the first ever voucher program dedicated to homelessness specifically. Uh, and we've seen that be incredibly successful um, and popular. Um, housing authorities across the country have partnered with homeless continuums of care. That partnership has proven to be wildly successful in ensuring that these vouchers are reaching the households that uh, need this the most. And we expect to see the impact of those resources um, when we release the results of the 2023 point in time count um, later this year. We look forward to seeing the president's budget. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Bam.